Alright, welcome back to Nick Lines. It's coming according to Classic Lesson Non Classic. That's episode number 2767, double episode number 2661. I have a Starman trade and a Superman trade. <clears throat> we have, first we have Starman Animus Volume 4, which collects these following books. <clears throat> Starman Volume 2, issue starting at 46. Powers the Power of Shazam, issues 35-36, Starman, 80-page giant, Starman the Mist, and uh, this book actually hits a little fun fact about these two issues here. First time this, this miniseries has ever collected in trade, Batman slash Hellboy slash Starman. Um, James Harper's writes pretty much everything here except for the Power of Shazam issues, that's not by Jerry Ordway. Uh, the artwork, here are your artists, Tony Harris, Mike Manolia. Pete Cruz, John Lucas, Matt, Matthew Mayhew, Greg Lister, Matt Smith, Gene Ha, Steve Sarutsky, Wayne Ron Grebiger, Dusty uh, Apple, and Tom Bugin. Uh, the cover artist uh, is mostly done here by Tony Harris, obviously. So, the first issue here is focused on the past. It's basically just, looks like um, Starman, like somebody else. I think it's like a bullet here. Well, take a look like flying Nazis. Asked about the or that a tattoo or basic objecting a tattoo parlor. Like, is he going to tattoo? Not really. Yeah, Jim Barr. Apparently he was this... Yeah. He was Bullet Man. So, yeah, he has to go to the... So he has basically the possibility he with the Mara family, and the first issue ends with Jack and I come face-to-face -face with... Captain Marvel himself. Not Shazam. That's not his name. It's Captain Marvel. I like a face the power of Captain Marvel. Yep, and we're going straight into Power Shazam, number 35. Written, written, written uh, uh, basically by Jerry White. He would do later the artwork for the series. Um, here's the thing about these issues. This comes toward the end of this really good ongoing series that... I think it's like one or two trades to click this whole run. If you're curious, how long is Power Shazam? It's 42 issues. This comes toward the last year of the book. It's basically a four-parter. That starts with Starman 39. Part 2 is this very book here, Star Power Shazam 35. Part 4 is, uh, I think it's like Starman 40. And Part 4 is just Power Shazam 36. It's mostly we have uh, Mary Marvel and her, bro and her twin brother... Well, Captain Marvel. Where basically, of course, you have the Bullet Man stuff and Starman. And, of course, there's stuff going in the book itself. It, you read this issue, it's almost like it has very little to do with, with basically Starman. The only reason why it's included because basically a Bullet Man. Yes. And then, like, oh yeah, then we have Starman basically with him. And, and, and Starman 40 picks up where uh, Starman 35 left off. Looking for him, and those of you like another thing about the book itself, Power Shazam was one of those titles that I've read that came. I wasn't reading at the time of ninety years later. Uh, it was one of those titles. It wasn't Batman. It was one. Of, it was one of the big titles, but it was a damn good title. It basically had the same type of tone I love about James Robinson Starman. Yes, Jerry Ordway himself, who had previously written Superman, he figured, though, why not give Captain Marvel a shot? And it was really good. Lasted a little bit three years. It wasn't the longest book was, but damn. And also, my guess is the reason why they lost it at the time, because this book proved to be probably the gangbusters of the 90s. Probably did really well. And if you case you're curious how long this book lasted for, 80 issues this time, the way he did have one issue for 2008, but... Last time was seven years, basically about half the time as, as um, how basically like, Power Shazam is like half the length of this one, 
Mm -hmm. Of course, there's a flying car thing. And of course, they just agree. Uh, of course, they briefly fight each other where, where Bar is. Like, but I'm a hero. Not, oh, please, Bar, not to Odera family. Yep. And it leads straight into issue 36. Where now they fight each other again. And Mary, Mary tells basically like, yeah, he should snap out of it. And oh yeah, and, and there's oh Wiz Radio, which yeah, I was gonna start to do. Uh, those of you curious about Wiz Radio, that was the, the radio station that Billy Bats had worked back in the forties. Uh, the name itself is a nod to uh, the comic that Captain Army had debut Wiz Comics. Uh, the name itself of the city this is said is Fossa City, named after Fossa Comics, the company who created Captain Marvel. And I'll explain more when I get to talk about his part, his original Shazam book, but more finding more monsters here. Mary steps into, and then of course they go their separate ways when they end the story, and they go straight back to Starman for like two more issues. Yeah, the Starman issues are not much in here per se. No. I mean, it's long because of the other stuff they put in here. If you're curious, it's only like about, like after this, like about five more Starman issues and that's it. On case you wonder about the annuals, uh, there are no more. They only put out two and that was it. Yeah, and of course, deal with Dr. Phosphorus here. Then we have the Shade team up with uh, the, the current Scott Hunter. He's apparently the O'Dare's are a loose, loosely related to Scalp Hunter. Yeah. And of course, more. This issue is all focused on uh, basically Matt O'Dayer team with a shade for an issue, which I found quite interesting. And then we have the Renick issue, where we have an appearance. We have this wonderful. It's called 1944 Science and Sorcery. Where we have a, it's a story focused on Ted Knight himself in the past as Starman. Of course, you guess we're going Alan Scott. And of course, Etrigan the Demon. Yeah, he's here too. It's a quick little two parter. And it's a sailor issue. Then we we'll go back to present day with what well, we Then we have the 80 page giant. This is like over 200 pages. This is like, this is an 80 page giant. The first story is focused on Jack Knight. It's a story focused on him and his relationship with Sadie, who's got who's got a tattoo on her lower back now. And then we have the second story focused on Shade and Scalp Hunter. I'm like, okay, another story for each of these two. And then the third story is about Ted Knight, the Golden Age Star Man. I'm like, good. I think it was the second time he's wrote a. And of course, this is a story where he fights the Mist in the past. Which that comes to play later on again. Uh, the next story is Bobo Bennett and Starman 1951. Okay, this plot of Starman 1951, this not resolved into the final story of the ser of this run. Yes. And that story then is basically about uh, the Odera family, which is basically Mason, Barry, Hope, and Matt. Yeah, Hope is a basically a recurring character in this book. And she comes to play. She has a big role to play in the book. And then we have next story in here focused on Mikkel Tomes. The star man in the 70s. Who basically, like, they mentioned, oh yeah, he showed, he was, it was like, he was there for like a, a brief play, then he disappeared. Yeah, that's a nod to his debut appearance back in the 70s, which prior to appearing in this book, that was his only appearance. And then, of course, basically, Ramos developed him very heavily in this book. It wasn't necessarily his book per se, we just hear a supporting character. And then we have cut to issue 43. By the way, love this cover here. We have Electric Blue Suit Man. We have him basically working here too. So then we have where Jack always have a store. We have more tea time with the shade. It's up here with the JLA. Yes, the JLA. Of course, you have Jack with his girlfriend Sadie. Yeah, and then basically, 
And then we reveal in this issue the thing that sets up the very sec the very next year of the comic, this spaceship. Yep. And before that, we actually have a one shot focused on the mist. Yes. Nash as her real name. Yeah, and apparently her baby is well, her and Jack Knight's son is being held hostage by old Green Lantern villain, the Black Hand. He's like, wait a minute, he, she probably doesn't know who Hal Jordan is. And I was like, you go face on a Hector or something? Other, the rogue Green Lantern with the, pink, the big pig head? <laughs> yeah, Black Hand, apparently... Yeah, this is kind of weird. And then she runs into Cap... It runs into... Yeah, so, oh, Captain Marvel, no, what? That, that, that is Mary Marvel. Yeah, I'm not sure why Nash would mistake Mary Marvel being Captain Marvel. Yeah. And of course, son's fine by the end of the story. But it's nice the fact that... And then we have a Sandra Knight story. Are you thinking, Knight, is she related to Jack Knight? Yes. She is her father's cousin. Well, his father's cousin. Yes, that's how they're related. Yeah, originally Sandra Knight was a character from the company, Quality Comics, that was retconned to being basically cousins. Which makes sense. Uh, this whole issue, issue 44, focused on her. Is just a venture of her in the 40s as Phantom Lady. Which I found to be really enjoyable. And then, of course, you have Ted interacting with, with briefly with his cousin here in this issue. Because, of course, he did. And then, like, the very next is go back to present day. We have this weird artwork here called SD Guy. Not a lot going on with this issue, per se. It's more like just, just a relaxing issue. Still great artwork. It's mostly a build up. It, it basically, the whole thing is leading to Jack McKell uh, going to space in a spaceship, and so Sadie accepts Jack's proposal. Now, why they're going to space? That's not revealed until the end of the space saga. Forty six is a flashback story, where it's set in looks like the forties. It's a character, Boba. They focus on him for this one issue here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a character associated with him. Of course, we have uh, Good and Bad Man, 1952. So it's 50s, not 40s, not 30s, 50s. Yeah, this also features uh, it's just basically just another story featuring Bilbo himself and the Shadies here too. A lot of fun this book here, but we're not done just yet. Next up, basically, we have the Batman Hellboy Starman crossover. Well, the story is this is, of course, set before uh, Ted, uh, basically, Jack goes to space. Because they put this right after Jack goes to space, but yet, this set before that, where Jack teams up with, uh, of course, you have guest appearance with the Joker. Batman's in here just for the opening issue. Now, Mike Minnelli does the artwork for this issue here, and. These two issues, but he does not do the writing. That writing here is done by James Robinson. Which, not a bad idea. And plus, DC probably trusts him to do Batman because he did the Doom that came to Gotham. Which is a great miniseries, by the way. Um, so, they have Batman, Hellboy, Team Boy, Chitter, which is just so awesome. The fact he flew here from DC. Yeah, and of course, they work with... Uh, Jack works with um, with Hellboy to go rescue his father in in, Afghan in in Argentina. And the reason why, because he fought Nazis in World War II, because of course he did. And of course, to fight more people here. This book is nothing more than still simply pure awesome as its finest. I got this book a 10 out of 10. Just a damn good book. And don't worry. More coming for that one. Next up we have is Superman, the Wrath of Gog. Yes. Written by Chuck Austin, awesome by Avarius. Love the artwork here. Not fancy on this writing here. So, uh, this trade here collects issues 812 to 819. Technically, from what I've read, uh, 812 and 813 are actually up 
the basically the backup stories from these issues. Yep. It's uh. Because these are all reflected in the Godfall stuff. So, so most of we have a flashback of Lana and Clark when they were younger. Then we have Super Fighting and Parax again. And after that, then we have the stuff that happened and other stuff. Basic goods a recap are. Godfall, Public Enemies, uh, Supergirl, Majestic, and Unconventional Warfare. Yeah, Superman, Five People on the Train. Still love the artwork, though. I love the artwork. But later on, we get some stupid stuff here. Oh boy, we get some stupid stuff. And all of a sudden we have Dark Souls on Calibac here. So it's like, yeah, let's well pass time. I beat a bunch of classics. And we have Dark Side once again show up here. Yeah, and yeah, and of course, Dark Side. Superman's punchy bag, just like Al Stephen Wolf is. So apparently. Clark's been demoted. Apparently he's been demoted for some reason. He's asked frequently to see Perry, but... It's like, yeah, apparently he's busy, and apparently he's been demoted. Yeah, then then we have appearance here by the Teen Titans. Yes, the James, the uh, St. James, uh, the Jeff Johns version. Uh, Superboy, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, no Robin. Of course, yeah, more people attack, and then, oh my gosh, then we have the Creeper here. Yes, Jack Ryder is here. Yes. And Court Jack is being a jerk. Yeah, and the, the person attacking the Teen Titans is Gog. Yeah. This thing from Kingdom Come that Chuck Austin had to bring in. Yes, we had to bring in Gog from Kingdom Come. Don't know why. Superman fights him. Because, of course, he's harming Superboy. Who is basically someone very close to him. And then he's affected with liquid kryptonite. Yes, for some reason he's affected with liquid kryptonite. For reasons. And of course God gets shocked. Superman is basically not exactly himself. And looks like he's near dying. Yeah, and then of course they, we have Wonder Woman here for reasons. Uh... No, it's nothing to do with the Super Wonder stuff. No, this is years before that. Yeah, then we have this doctor here, who just on call, who looks like, probably like a cheap version of Kevin Smith. I'm not sure. He looks very familiar. Yep, he's here to just help drain. They drain most of the liquid kryptonite stuff. And then we have uh, Black Lightning, Steel, and various other heroes dealing with... Um, some of the crises here, it's like, yeah, deal with more alien invasion, and of course Wonder Woman gets involved too. Uh, Superman gets briefly involved. Comes the story, yeah. Yeah, Superman gets hurt by this guy because of all the glitch kind of stuff, and eventually, of course, then he, then we have looks like Firehawk, I think it is. I think that's Firehawk. No, I'm not sure who that is. Yeah. 
I can tell kind of that's uh, that's Natasha Irons. Yes, that was her suit. She had a uh, free flashpoint. Mm -hmm. And look, even though it's the 2000s, let's do the boot butt pose because probably Chuck also requested that. Yep. And after finding like deep enough, nope. And then we have Wonder Woman just sitting next to Clark. And they're at Lana's place. Yes. By the way, her son's name is Clark. Pete's Pete Ross's son. See, Pete Ross married Lana, and then they divorce, and yeah, and then the course that well, they share a bed together and then fight these electric people. And then for some reason, I'm not sure why, Lana decided to take off Clark's pants. No, not the half sec. Just basically trees uniform. Yep. And this is all because Lana is still in love with Clark. Despite the fact he is married to Lana. Yeah, and still go back in between fighting these, these lightning twins and fighting and of course talking to Lana. And then like actually the like lovers. And that's kinda of, kinda of the book ends. It's like, yeah, let's have a bunch of stuff happen over the course of several issues. Uh, probably the best thing about this issue is the artwork. Uh, but it just feels as though, like, this book, it just cons us up. So, still Superman basically written in character. Uh, it's just that the biggest problem I have with this book is Lana Lang. Why is she here? And why has Clark been demoted? Good question. Maybe with previous story I haven't viewed yet, but... I give this book roughly a 8.5 out of 10. I would give basically the artwork a 10 out of 10 because I love Ivory and artwork. I can't believe this guy is still doing artwork this very day. I think it was recent book. He actually did some Superman book recently. Uh, he did Bendis and Superman. Love his artwork for Superman, Superman for, for that book. It was amazing. Yeah, so that's pretty much a particular view. Excuse me. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications. And do not hit the like button. Now, before I do the Tom Cruise Assignment, Miss Stephen County, there are two finales I'm going to do first. First of which is going to be the final episode that's been aired right now for Art Series Lama Hello Elf Bride. And then I'm going to do the final episode of Reborn to Master the Blade. Okay? See you.